Welcome to this LibreOffice Calc lesson on charts. Charts can make it easier to understand large quantities of data. They can usually be read more quickly than the raw data they're produced from. You will usually want to summarize the data before making a chart, like I did here. To create a new chart, select the range of cells with the field headers in the table. Don't include the totals. Drag and highlight A2 to C14 in this table. Then either click the chart button on the toolbar or go to the insert menu and choose chart or use the shortcut. Hold down Alt and press IA. A preview of the chart will appear along with the chart wizard. The wizard will take you through four steps to complete the chart. You don't have to go through all the steps, nor do you have to do the steps in any particular order. If you're happy with the way the chart looks at any time, just click the Finish button. You could go back and edit the chart at any time if you need to. I'll go through the steps to show you some of the more important items. Step 1 is the type of chart. The default chart type is a column chart. There are many chart types to choose from though. Click on one to get a preview of what they look like. Column and bar charts have rectangular bars with lengths proportional to the values they represent. They have several variations like stacked, where the categories are stacked on each bar, or percent stacked, where the bars indicate the percentage of each item to the whole. Under here, you can choose to make it a 3D chart. You can have realistic or simple 3D, and choose the shape of the bars. And here's some examples of different shapes. Back to our list of charts. Pie charts display percentage values as pie slices. They're used when you want to view the relationship of individual items to the whole. Line charts show values as points on a horizontal axis. They're best used to represent numbers which change over time. Points and lines are a good variant of this one. Then area charts are a variation of line charts, with the lines filled in. Most of the others are more specialized types of charts. Column and line is a combination of line and column charts, which can be useful in some situations. I'll put it back on the default column chart. Click Next to go to the next step. The data range is the range I already selected in the table. If you want a different range, click the button on the right, drag and highlight the range in the table you want. Data series in rows gets its data from consecutive rows in the table. So it reads the table one row after another. January expenses, February expenses, and so on down the list. It reaches the end and starts in the next column, January revenue, February revenue, so on. In the chart, the bars appear in the same order. Expenses for January, February, March, April, through the year, then revenue for January, February, and so on. Data series and columns gets its data from consecutive columns in the table. It reads one column after another. January expenses, January revenue, February expenses, February revenue, and so on down the table. So in the chart, they come out in the same order. January expenses, January revenue, February expenses, February revenue, and so on. Best thing to do is just try them both and see which one comes out the way you want. Then down here, by default, the first row is label and first column is label are checked. The first column contains the months of the year, and the first row contains field headers, expenses, and revenue. So this is what we want. Click Next. Here you can add or remove a data series. For example, instead of having expenses in the chart, 
I want to compare revenue from 2013 in this other table with the revenue from 2014. I'll select Expenses in the Data Series window, then I'll click the Remove button. Select Name in the Data Ranges window, then click the button next to where it says Range for Name. Select cell A1 where it says 2014, that'll be our name. Then click the Add button. Click to make sure name is selected in the data ranges. If not, click on Name. Then click the button next to the input box labeled Range for Name. Then in the second table, click A18 where it says 2013. Now click Y values in the data ranges window. Click the button to the right of the box labeled Range for Y Values. Drag and highlight C20 to C31 in the Revenue column from the 2013 table. Now the revenue for 2014 and 2013 can be compared. This is how you can compare data from two different tables. The bars are the same colors. We could change that after we get out of the wizard. Click Next. A title can be added to the table here. I'll put 2013 versus 2014 Revenue. You can also add a subtitle and labels to the X and Y axis areas. The Z axis is for when you're using a 3D chart. Well, I'm finished here. Click Finish. First thing I want to do is change the color of one of the groups of bars so they can be distinguished from one another. Right click on a bar and choose Format Data Series. Under the Area tab, choose a color. I'll choose this blue. Click OK. Another thing you might want to do here is to narrow the range. None of the values really go below 80,000. So if the series of values started there, the chart would convey the differences better. Click the Y axis button on the toolbar. Under the Scale tab, where it says Minimum, uncheck Automatic, then type 80,000 into the input box. The major interval can also be changed. As it is, the numbers go up by 20,000 each point. I'll change it to 10,000. So uncheck Automatic and type 10,000 into the input box. Unfortunately, there's no longer a live preview. It only works when you're in the wizard. In order to see the changes, click OK. Now the differences are much more pronounced. You can also add trend lines to the chart. Right-click on a bar and choose Insert Trend Line. A dialog appears giving you options for different ways to calculate the trend line and name it. I'll leave it as it is. Click OK. The background color of the chart wall can be changed by clicking the Chart Wall button on the toolbar. In the dialog under the Area tab, choose a color. A light blue-gray might look nice. Then click OK. Basically, any part of the chart can be formatted in this way. To get out of Chart Edit Mode, click somewhere outside the chart on the sheet. The chart can now be moved to another location on the sheet by dragging it. Then click on the sheet outside the chart again. If you ever need to go back and edit the chart, double-click on it and it'll take you back to Chart Edit Mode. To demonstrate some more of Calc's chart features, I'll create a pie chart comparing sales for different departments of a store. In this table, drag and highlight A3 to B9, hold down Alt and press IA, or use the Chart button. I'm just going to change the chart type to pie and press Finish. Now we're in Chart Edit Mode. First, I'll add a title. 
So click the Titles button on the toolbar. You don't need to use the wizard to put a title in. Type Sales 2014. Then click OK. It's really not too easy to see what the pie slices represent. So we need data labels. Right click on the pie and choose Insert Data Labels. Well, this doesn't really work either too well. Some of the labels are difficult to read. They're mixing in with the colors of the pie. So right click on the pie again and choose Format Data Labels. Under the Data Labels tab in the dialog, down here where it says Placement, choose Outside. This will put the labels outside the pie. They'll be easy to read that way. Check Show Values as Percentage, so we can see the percentages. Check Show Category, this way the categories will show up for each slice. For Separator, choose New Line, so the value, percentage, and category are on separate lines on each label. Click OK. I'll drag the title over to the right here. The chart can now be made larger by pulling one of the small black boxes at the bottom or edges, then drag. The legend isn't needed anymore, so click the Legend On Off button on the toolbar, and there you have it. You probably don't need all that information. You can right-click on the pie and choose Format Data Labels and uncheck the values or percentages. I'll just have it show the percentages. Click OK. If you want to change the color of an individual slice, first click on the pie to select it. When the pie is selected, small green boxes appear in each slice. With the pie selected, click on the slice you want to change. You can tell only one slice is selected because there are now eight small boxes forming a square around the slice. Now you can choose any individual slice by clicking on it. You can use this method to format individual items in any group, like one bar in a bar chart or individual labels. First click to select any member of the group, then a moment later click an individual item. Don't double click. So now I have the individual slice I want to format selected. Right click and choose Format Data Point. In the dialog that comes up, under the Area tab, choose a color. There are other options besides color like Gradient, Hatching, or Bitmap. I'll just choose a color, maybe a purple. Click OK. As you can see, Calc gives you a lot of options for formatting charts the way you want. Well, that does it for this lesson about charts in LibreOffice Calc. Thanks for watching!